still remember the first time I played it, actually. It was a Texas Pinball Festival, and uh, it, they were busy as usual. <laughs> I was walking around trying to find a game to play, because every game seemed to have like two or more people waiting in line. And that's when I saw it. There was no one playing it. I felt that the reason behind that was because of the game's theme. Soccer. But I'm not one to turn down a game due to its theme. So I pressed start. The ball ejects into the shooter lane. The goalie begins to move back and forth. The soccer ball begins to spin. Now even though Texas Pinball Festival is loud, I could still hear that voice say, The players are taking the field! I honestly thought to myself that they were really trying to make soccer seem fun with this game just by looking at it. I, mean, I played my three balls and my game was over, but then something happened. I looked over my shoulder and with hopes that there was still no one else waiting to play this game. Thankfully, that was indeed still the case. So I did what any other person would do. I played another game. World Cup Soccer 94 Designed by John Papaduke and Larry DeMar Art by Kevin O'Connor Dots and Animation by Scott Slomani and Eugene Gear. Mechanics by Jack Scallon Music and Sound by Vince Pontanarelli Software by Larry DeMar and Matt Coriel We are going back to the year of 1994 when pinball was still around its peak. This was J-Pop's first big game before he brought us other A-list games like Theater of Magic, Tales of the Arabian Nights, and Circus Voltaire. We get introduced to his signature style ramps. His use of magnets. And his intricate design. But on a theme that doesn't speak to the typical pinhead soccer. But as time has passed over the years, it seems that many people are starting to realize this game is worth owning. But why? Let's give this game a review and find out. Design. This game honestly has a pretty good amount of stuff in it. You got two flippers, three pops, two ramps, one buck that feeds a wire form, a spinner, kickback, magna save, moving goalie target, large hemi soccer ball that spins in both directions, a ramp diverter, five rollover buttons, second play field with a magnet diverter for locking balls, three eject holes, and a scoop with a buck. Scratch that, this game has a lot in it. Now I do have some words from J-Pop when it comes to the design of this game, and it reads, the first mechanism in the game design was originally another DMD display, an upright position, to be used as a digital goalie. Now I'm kind of wondering if that is a little bit of what we see in like Circus Voltaire. I don't know. The first World Cup Soccer Whitewood was designed as a wide body with a super game feature. Management came in and made the design team move to a narrow body and take out some of the features. Now I'm definitely curious on what those features were that were removed. So let's talk about the plunge. You will need to gauge your plunge accordingly in order to land in a flashing socket to get those extra points. After the coin toss, the ball will always roll safely to your right flipper. Now the major key point in this game and what is the most entertaining by, I wanna say everyone, is getting the goal shot by getting the ball past the goalie to score the goal. I call the goalie Jesus because Jesus saves. Hallelujah. And sometimes he saves a lot. Oh, you oh, you mother. Now, if you have really bad timing, then you can even miss the goal shot when you have an assist. Oh my God. 
Now, one of the main visual features of this game is the Hemi soccer ball. And I say visual because it takes up a good amount of play field space, but it does just very little. I mean, what it does is just add chaos to your ball because it will give your pinball an extra spin, giving it un, you know, foreseen like directions of what it will hit whenever it bounces off anything else. But you can use the spinning soccer ball to your advantage and cause the ball to bounce off into the goal. I've done it plenty of times, I'm sure many of you have as well, it's very nice. Another perk I would say to this game is that anywhere you shoot your ball, I'd say you have about a 90% chance or better of hitting something that adds points to your score. <laughs> because there's like switches and targets and stuff like that just scattered along the whole play field and it's difficult not to hit them. Uh, without a doubt, if you're a postmaster like me, then you will find the areas that don't give you points. Now, when it comes to how the ball drains, I have found that you have a very even mixture of out lanes to straight down the middle ratio, which is good, so it's not so chaotic whenever you see the ball go to the right or to the left, because technically you could lose it anywhere. And uh, that's nice. It's a nice, good, even across the board, so I find that a good perk. The game layout and how it interacts with the ball, I feel caters to all age groups. Meaning, like, if you're a child and don't really know how to play the game, you could have fun just shooting at everything, and especially the goalie. Or you can be tactical and go for the World Cup. Now, I do have some dislikes for the game, but they're not so much game breakers or anything. I just felt like they were thrown into the game and they don't serve a, a good purpose, really. You have your two side eject holes that when you land in there, it lights up the free kick option for you. But I feel that that kind of slows the game down a little bit. It gives the player a little bit of a breath to take, a little bit of relaxation, but the game isn't so stressful and chaotic where I feel that I need to take a break. I felt that maybe they could have just put targets there, so, but all that really does, I think with the eject holes, is just kind of slow the game down. It's kind of a minor nitpick on that. And my, my other one is honestly the magnet that's above the left flipper. I felt that I, I don't really ever use it. And I don't think it really needs to be. I mean, tell, by all means, if you own this game and you feel like you use that magnet a lot and it serves a higher purpose, then let me know in the comments down below. But I've had this game for years and I get pretty good high scores and I've beaten you know the game essentially by going and getting the World Cup without ever using that magnet. I feel that it's on there. It's more of a gimmick than it actually is purposeful. And with all that, I give design a 9.5 out of 10. art. Now this is kind of a mixed bag because you have the cabinet artwork that looks very like professional like what like World Cup soccer's actual artwork is it just looks more serious I guess I should say and then you go to the trans line and the play field and it looks much more playful and colors dif different whole it's just a different bag which is why I say mixed because you have serious on the outside and playful on the inside so that can be taken either way on that whether you think that's good or bad but that's definitely just polar opposites now something also to note that that there was also different artwork for the play field originally and I got some pictures for that that's available on the pinball database I'll show them to you now while I state what J-Pop was saying also about that art. The playfield showed the original prototype artwork which was looking back to Bally Fireball from 1971 for colors. It was decided it was too retro looking and the new colors chosen. Only one sample chromatin was produced. Most certainly the color green was removed completely from the game and soft shade of teal green was replaced. Grass green is a particularly challenging color to work into pinball. Now honestly I think that was a good decision because the colors on this game are actually really good and, and I'm not trying to shill pin stadiums here but putting pin stadiums on this game was a very good decision because it really makes those pastels really stand out and the other colors on the plate they'll just really pop and brings them out when of course you use the appropriate lighting i've seen games 
throw a lot of purples in there and it just drowns all those colors out and even I've seen people use Penn Stadiums but they put too much green in the light and once again drowns them out but if you put it in there with the clean white with a little touch of blue in there just a little hint of it it really makes those colors really pop and it just looks a lot better I want to say that like designing the art for this game had to have been tricky because you're having to obviously abide by the World Cup soccer licensing as well to cater to a large audience in relation to pinball. So I'm feeling that they definitely had to do a lot of trial and error on this. And I felt that they did the best that they could with what they had. I mean, I don't feel like there's a bunch on the play field that really shows you that you are in the world of soccer at this point. But I think that everything as a whole, with the soccer ball, the plastics, all the, thing, all the things inside the play field, coalesce together to really reflect that you are in the world. But the art by itself, not so much. And with all that, I'm going to be giving art a 7 out of 10. Dots and animation. Now I don't have the color DMD installed on my World Cup Soccer anymore, it's on my getaway. I will eventually get another one and it will be going in this game because the game looks so much better with the color DMD. The animations are right there along with what you see on the play field and in the back glass. They all mesh very well together. So it's hard to complain about what there is on there when everything coalesces together and just it's nice and smooth so I, I gotta give props to the animations on meshing well with the play field art as well as the trans light there are some easter eggs in the animations of this game and that is in the tv award number four whenever you're trying to find striker you have a chance of seeing a number of characters throughout other games for instance you'll see a character from creature from the black lagoon um, you'll see Raiden from Mortal Kombat, you'll see a cow, you'll see, let's see here, I want to say there was one more, oh, uh, Admiral Bag from Star Trek The Next Generation. So if you get to there, those are some Easter eggs for you. But uh, with all that said and done, animations is a pretty easy thing to go through and say that I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Code and Software The soccer ball and the goalie will begin moving at the beginning of every ball, or whenever you roll over all five of the rollover switches leading up to the goalie, they will initiate and begin to move. Now once you score a goal, the goalie will stop moving and the ball will stop spinning, but you also have other kind of modes that you can go into in the scoop on the play field, like the TV awards and stuff like that. So there are other modes along with the main mission of the game that I will go over now. So how you play this game in a nutshell. You need to obtain two airline tickets in order to travel to the next city. You obtain these tickets by hitting both ramps or utilizing the rollover switches that are right above the pop bumpers. Now once you have your two tickets, you will see the travel insert light up leading to the spinner. You want to hit the spinner, that will escalate you to the next city. You will rinse and repeat that method until you get to LA and battle Germany for the World Cup. World Cup is a mode at which you have endless multiball and you need to score more points than Germany does before time runs out. If you score more than Germany, congratulations, you've won the World Cup. Now that's basically the core mechanics of the game, but there is another way that you can go about getting to the World Cup, or beating Germany rather, and that is by going into multi-ball by locking your ball, but in order to lock your ball you need to basically gather up five different skill sets that are lit up in the center of the play field. Speed, strength, um, I'll show you right here, I can't remember off the top of my head what they all five are, but every shot on the play field, there's four different shots, it will light up, build up. You will hit all those shots and that will give you the ability to light up your lock. You will hit one of your ramps, the ball will go over there and lock on the upper play field. Now in order to go into multi-ball, you need to go into final draw which all you have to do is make a ball into the scoop on the play field. 
and there you have it, you are going to be in a three ball multi ball. While in this three ball multi ball, you need to hopefully hold on to at least two of those balls to stay in multi ball mode. Now you're going to score a point by going past the goalie, but the goalie's going to stop moving until you hit one of your ramps. Once you hit one of your ramps, the goalie will initiate again and you're going to be battling against another city. Rinse and repeat this method of hitting your ramps and getting past the goalie, you eventually will get to Germany and you can battle through Germany. If you beat Germany that way, then you're gonna go into, uh, it's I think it's like final lap mode. Yeah, final lap mode, and that's where you can really rack in the extra points. I'm hoping that was pretty easy for you guys to understand because the code honestly is pretty straightforward, and I feel that that's probably why it caters to a wide audience, is because although it is simple, but it's not exactly easy to accomplish unless you really get these shots down. But it's fun, I haven't gotten tired of it. I'm giving the code and software a 10 out of 10. Sound, music, and callouts. Now I'm combining all three of these together for a good reason, because I wanna say that the music and sounds by themselves are just, you know, they're good for the game. They do their job. But the callouts, I believe, is where this game really does shine. The callouts are performed by the voice actor Tim Kitzrow, who's done many games with Midway, but I think one of his most popular that everyone probably knows his voice from is from NBA Jam. But throwing his voice into this game, I believe, is what throws it into a higher score. Because it's his voice that you hear throughout the game as you're making the goal and hearing him say, Go! And just the shots that you make whenever the goalie saves the ball, like, like he's a brick wall, wall. Like, like, like all these little call outs that really throw this game into a higher bracket when it comes to the sound music and call outs. So, dare I say that the call outs from Tim are what carries the audio in this game? I, I don't want to say that, but it definitely brings it to a whole new level. Because I don't think the game would be as enjoyable with the volume turned all the way down. It's the excitement that, it, that you feel inside whenever you hear his voice calling out what's going on within the game. But the music and the sounds are also great. I don't have any kind of annoyances or nitpicking with them. They go very well with what's going on. But again, I'm just going to double down on the fact that the callouts are what really carries the audio for the game. So with all that, I'm going to be giving sound, music, and callouts a 9 out of 10. What a remarkable finish! That puts the collective score for World Cup Soccer 94 at a 9.1 out of 10, which is a very good score. This is a very good game. I highly recommend it to anybody out there that has not played it yet and if you're looking for an entertaining game for the entire family then by all means this is one to have. I think the most common reaction that I get with visitors to my home and I tell them to play this game is that it's always first impressions of it's like oh it's soccer uh -uh. but then they play it and they change their mind. This is a game that I really don't see leaving my collection. If anything, I really do want to make this game even look even better than it already does. But there's many other games that are going to be in front of that. But it's one that I do not plan on getting rid of. When I'm going down my row and I'm trying to figure out which one, if I had to cut one, I get to this one and then I'm like, no, I can't. And a part of that is because I've been watching the value on this game go up and up over the last couple of years. So I'm glad I got it for the price I did when I did. So there you have it guys, my review for World Cup Soccer 94. Do you feel that the game should have been higher or lower on the scoreboard? And if so, tell me why and what you would score it. If you like what you've seen here, give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, by all means, hit the subscribe button down below guys. That way you can be notified of whenever I upload something for your viewing pleasure. And until next time, Peace out.